where I, I, I realized, like, wait a second, like, I want to live, a, like, a compassionate life myself. Like, this is a huge ideal for me, and I try and do that. And then now, when I stopped eating the meat, it's like, wait, this is way more in align with that compassion idea. It's like, now I'm not taking life every time I sit down and eat. So the question I like to ask myself when I get in the planning mode is, like, if I'm demanding that everything be a certain way, am I really living? Is it, is that really what, do I, do I really want to wake up every day and know exactly what's going to happen to me? And then as soon as I lay my head on the pillow, pillow, I fall asleep and do it all over again, all this stuff. And I'm, and my big thing with medicine and wellness and who I am as a, who I've discovered myself to be as a, as a person here is that like, I always seeking a way to combine the spiritual with the physical, like this balance That was Alex Buell, plant-based athlete, yogi, and aspiring MD, and this is the Yogi Triathlete Podcast. So one thing that we've learned from being on the road is that we need to be super resourceful, and today's practice of resourcefulness has landed me at the Watkins Glen Public Library in upstate New York. I'm using their conference room to record our intro and outro this week. So if it sounds echoey, it's because the room is empty and huge and I have an overhead AC blasting, but hey, it's happening. We're recording. You're getting the show this week and that's all that matters because I have a very special dude for you today. Actually, I'm going to have the same very special dude for you next week too as I'm breaking up our conversation into two parts. I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed creating it with Alex. We could have gone on forever, and since we've been keeping our shows to about an hour or less, I thought a two-parter may be a cool thing to do while still keeping your attention. And speaking of, I want to get your attention with our sweet August giveaway with Ufos Recovery Sandals. You have the entire month of August to leave us, the Yogi Triathlete Podcast, a review on iTunes, and get yourself in the running to win a free pair of Ufos Sandals. Check out the show notes for this episode. All the details are going to be there for you. Now listen up. BJ and I are literally living in these shoes. I can't tell you how many times I've said, okay, today I'm going to wear my cute and less comfortable flats. And then I get to my destination and I look down and I'm still wearing my UFOs. That's because you literally forget you are wearing shoes when you are rocking these bad boys. The contest is painless and free, and so will be your feet if you come out the lucky winner of our giveaway this month. So get to iTunes and good luck. All right, now let's get to the show already. In part one, Alex and I chat up travel, honoring the cultures found in foreign lands while maintaining alignment with values, the importance of diving into the vast unknown as a way to truly experience life. And we, of course, discuss plant-based nutrition. And I think we leave you with a little bit of a cliffhanger. So we'll have to see. But thanks so much for tuning in, you guys. And I hope you enjoy the ride of part one, my conversation with Alex Buell. All right, so how many many times were you uh, non-vegan on your trip? How many? I don't, I'd probably say... I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 times. Maybe. I don't like I tried so hard not to. But 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 when you eat, when you are in another culture like that, they're not. You don't want to you want to ride that line of like respecting your body and your ethics and what you how you like to live. But you also want to respect what they're serving you, because I remember when I was in India, I was a vegetarian at the time. I was still doing cheese and everything, but I was like, I'm not eat what is it? It's um mutton. I like I literally like the whole time I was like, I'm not eating no. mutton. <laughs> like I'll go on this trip, I'm not eating mutton. I'm going on the trip, I'm not eating mutton. <laughs> I was saying for like that for like months before we even went on the trip. And um so what happened? So we get there and um our student one of our students invites us over to her house, which is the size of this room for her and her husband and their kids. And what do they cook up? They cook up mutton, which is goat mm-hmm. and a huge honor 
So I <laughs> and then it was like, so it wasn't just like have a serving. I was like, okay, I'm gonna eat because you always have the plan. Like I'm like, all right, I'm gonna eat the mutton and then I'm getting out. Then, like yeah, no more like, mutton. Like, just like, like this little bit. And yeah, then like, like three little right. pieces and then I'm done. And they just kept coming over and like more mutton and more mutton. So you know, in, in that moment, I just realized that the honor of being with them and sharing in a meal and that they were serving meat. Um, what and you know that the harvesting of that animal probably was nothing like the way that it's, I mean, the end point's still the same, right? Right, right, but you're not But it's, I think that they honor their food a little bit more over there than, say, maybe the factory farms in our country. But I just chalked it up to the experience, and I ate it, and um, I I remember being okay, but you were telling me before we started recording that um, you didn't feel that great. No, no, so, yeah. Um, I specifically fish was like this big thing. I never had a problem eating fish like before I was a vegan. I liked it. And, um, then of course went down the plant-based road and cut everything out. So I hadn't had fish in, I mean, maybe two years. And it's pretty funny. I'm like on this trip with a, like a bunch of people and we're, we're we're mountain biking like along like around this like volcanic in this na- national park for this volcano called Cotopaxi. But anyways, at the end of it, we get to this pond, and it's a it's just a trout pond, and they give us a fishing pole, which was just a stick and oh. and, and and a little and some fishing line. They put a piece of bread on, and then they're like, "All right, throw throw it in the water." Oh God! So you had to actually catch. Oh yeah, your, catch <laughs> your meal. This was like, whoo, like every like pushing my buttons, like all of them, like yeah. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay. As you're sitting here with your no meat, yeah, I know my no meat out now, right? <laughs> you're like, I'm back. I'm throwing on all the labels. Yes, like, yes. I'm gonna get back into Putting my back. role. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, anyways, I'm like the there's like probably a group of twelve. I'm the like either the last one or the second to last one to catch the like my fish, mm-hmm. and I catch it, I, like bring it out, and the guys like and then this is in Spanish. The guys like, oh my god, like that's the biggest fish oh, of the god. day. Like that's a beautiful trout, and he starts just like filleting it right there in front of me, and I was like, all right. This was is- it already dead? Or- <laughs> no, no, he's no. filleting it. This live. thing's like flopping around and like Whoa. yeah, like yeah, like so. So how were like how? Like, what did you do in that moment? Were you like really present in that moment? Were you feeling like how were you feeling in that moment when you're watching this guy? Like you caught this fish, nice big fish, probably had a beautiful healthy life. <laughs> you catch it, and now he's filleting it live in front of you. Right, that's it, intense. It was intense. How like, are you in that moment? Like, what were you feeling? I was, I know my like my journey into plant based nutrition was never the goal was never for like animal rights that wasn't really my like motivating factor. Yeah, us too. Um, it was always it was I mean it started with training for races and that kind of stuff, um, health reasons. But it's like you, I like went through this weird transformation with it. I I guess I could say and like where I I f- I realized like wait a second like. I want to live a, like a compassionate life myself. Like this is a huge ideal for me and I try and do that. And then now when I stopped eating the meat, it's like, wait, this is way more in align with that compassion idea. It's like now I'm not taking a life every time I sit down and eat. So, so you were thinking about compassion before you were even connecting. Right. I didn't, I hadn't connected the dots, mm-hmm. like no dots connected at all. Um, so now, now I'm back, right? I'm in this, I have my fish, the guy's flaying it and I'm like, Oh my god! Like Whoa. dots connecting, like, like oh, in that moment, yeah. Like I'm like sitting, I'm like, well, like I I see like all this resistance, like oh my god, he's killing this fish right in front of me, and all that, and I'm like, whoa, like I didn't even know that was back there, like I, oh my god, like, so I didn't in this moment, yeah, like I didn't know that Whoa. like all these things were like I it was just like I hadn't had an experience that potent, like I before, like I'd gone fishing, I'd caught fish before, I'd seen all this, but for some reason, just in that moment, it was like whoa wow like i saw all of it like almost i guess kind of full circle like without yeah. saying all of the story like beforehand but um yeah so but again i'm in this other culture i'm with 
a group of people were like, wow, like they're praising me for catching this huge fish. Right. Like so many other aspects are coming in aside from just my like ethical values or my desire to, to like feed my body in like the healthiest way possible. So there's just that other, like in that factor, the, the culture factor in that moment was more powerful just because this is a foreign place. This isn't my home. Like I don't have my, like everything set up. I can't go to a fridge and yeah. have my, my salad or what, so whatever. You, so what I'm getting is you were just like, you were what, um, what I hope, I hope to be in all the, in all moments is just, you were in the moment and you were yeah. like, okay, this is what's happening. And just going with it as opposed to resisting it but feeling that resistance and and obviously having this huge like awakening in connection of how you know what needs to happen when that that meat or that fish gets to a plate right and and really feeling it like internalizing what was happening to that fish in that moment and that you caught it you took it out of its home now it's being filleted and now you're gonna eat and it. i'm gonna eat it yeah oh my god <laughs> yeah um, so how did it feel? Like, how did it taste and how did you feel after you ate it? Right. So we, yeah, we, we're all sitting down at a table. We get a, like, I have my fish and there's other things like some salad and some, but all, all you can probably like, see all I'm is seeing is this <laughs> damn fish in front of me. I'm like, <laughs> um, and I, I, I mean, I'm like, I'm here. I'm just like, like you said, I'm just, I'm going to experience this right now. And I'm eating the fish. I'm like, all right, it's it tastes good. Like the, it's, it, it has a good taste. Like I, it, I'm not, I would never say, I'm never going to say like, like I ate meat and fish and eggs and all that kind of stuff up until I was like 23 years old. So, and I, it tastes damn good. Like it's, it tastes really good. I, but the, almost like the second I started eating it, I just like, all of a sudden I'm just feeling like this heaviness. It's just like this, like, that's the best way I can describe it. I just, my body felt heavy. I, when I was eating, I was like, wow, maybe this is like the fish is really fatty. Yeah. And I was like, I, for some reason, like, I feel like this is the fat. Like, I'm just this really oily substance and like it's going in my body and then I yeah. feel sluggish. Well, you're eating, yeah, you're eating mm. the flesh. So in the right. flesh, you're going to have the, you know, you're going to have the muscle, which is typically what we eat. And then you're going to have the connective tissue and, you know, there's capillaries and all that stuff. That's why, you know, it's, that's how the blood gets into the muscles and things like that. And I think that that's a lot of heavy stuff to eat. And I don't, I don't know this from a a factual standpoint, just from what I've, I guess maybe factual standpoint, but from what I've read and from what I've heard is like, I think people look at fish as, oh, it's, it's low in cholesterol. It's low in this, it's low in that. This is like the healthy option. But the, the information that I've received over the past couple of years and just doing research and on a plant-based lifestyle is that fish is actually really fatty and that there's a lot of oils and there's a lot of cholesterol in it. I think a lot more so than, than people realize. Um, so maybe you were, I mean, it's been a long, how many years since you've eaten like the flesh of an animal? It was like one and a half, two years, something like that yeah. in that ballpark. Probably more like one and a half, one, some, like something like that. So it had been a while. Yeah. Been a long time. But yeah, I get that all the time. I get people talking will talk to me about um all right, well what what's what's the deal with the fish? Like why can't you eat the fish? Right. Like, I don't get it. And my understanding too, my working understanding with doing just reading through like nutritional information and studies and whatnot is is really not that much different in terms of like cholesterol with, with between eating a fish and like say steak. You know, right. it's like it's just as bad for for heart disease for cancer risk for all these i mean you could argue that all those are chronic diseases so i mean it's just as bad i mean you can get omega-3s that's like the big hot ticket item like oh take your omega you get your omega-3s from your fish take your fish oil all that kind of stuff but you get your omega-3s because of what the fish is eating right right that's that's like the (laughs) connection that's so i I don't know i don't know why same thing it's so hard yeah Right. Like, why is it so hard to make the connection where it's, or I love the shirts that have like a, a rhinoceros or something. And yes. Like this huge, like really buff animal. And it's like, these, these guys eat plants. Right, they're herbivores. They're I herbivores. know. I have a, t- a tank top that I, um, that I teach yoga in a lot and it's a big elephant because I love elephants, obviously. Mm. And, um, it says herbivore on it. And, and, um, you know, it's funny because I don't know that I made that connection, um, 
it, up until you know, maybe I, maybe I knew they were herbivores, but I always thought like like oh my god, and like, now it's really clear like those guys just eat like plants and grass and you know dirt and soil and bark and whatever it is that they eat, but they eat plants right. and they're huge. So our you know we don't want to be fresh, but we get the question all the time, and I know you probably do too. Like you know, where do you get your protein? And in, in, so BJ, BJ's new one is like, I don't know. Like, where do cows get the protein? Like, I don't know. Like, And I always just say, like, the same place as a rhinoceros. Yeah, that's a good, like, that was a good answer. <laughs> like, like, same place as a rhinoceros gets right. it. But yeah, the, um, the, the whole thing with the omegas is that it's not in the fish. I mean, it's in the fish because of what the fish eats in the ecosystem within like where it lives and it's the same thing with why um there's b12 in cows and and things like that because they're eating the soil so what we say is um you know just cut the middleman out right (laughs) just eat what the cows are eating just eat the the you know like there is a there is an argument um with like we don't wash our vegetables all that great you know we buy them organic and sometimes we don't buy them organic but um because we want to get a little bit of that soil on there and the argument against it we've got this friend um jess who's a raw vegan chef do you know jess i don't yeah she's she's awesome she's a yoga teacher over here but she's a raw vegan chef and um, I've, I've talked to her about it, and she's a proponent of really, like, she kind of gave me these, she got these big, beautiful eyes, and she kind of gave me the big, beautiful eyes, like, oh, my God, you don't really wash your your vegetables. And um, and her argument was just that the soil is so just depleted and toxic and acidic, and, you know, what's the risk of, you know, like, where what's the payoff getting the B12, which you can get through nutritional yeast or, you right. know, through a good supplement, or eating the, um, or eating the, you know, the dirt and stuff. I mean, if you're gonna get a salad, if BJ's gonna make you your salad, you're gonna get everything that came up with that plant. Like he doesn't wash, <laughs> he doesn't wash a thing. I'm so, so lazy with my washing too. My vegetables, I'm like, I like put the water on and I like go on there, like, I'm like just get it onto the stream, and then I'm like, all right, that's it. I'm done. Yeah, like, I mean, I look at the kale, and sometimes there's definitely friends in there, and yeah. so that's a good sign to me. It's like, oh, if they're eating it, then I want to eat it. So I remove them and all of that. Um, root vegetables, and this is something that I took from my friend Jess, like root vegetables, I'll either peel, um, or wash them really, really good. Um, but then like, what's the, what's the trade off? Cause I'm washing them in Newport water and Newport water is not, not water that I would drink. Right. So it's, we don't have a filter on the house. So anyway, it's, it's always just doing the best you can, which it sounds like you did in that situation with the fish. Yeah. But, um, yeah. so yeah, to get back to that. So you're saying you were feeling heavy, like almost immediately after you ate it. Yeah. It was pretty, it was, yeah, it was almost like right after like, yeah. And how long did that stay with you? I don't know exactly like a, a good time frame. I mean, yeah. traveling in that in the way that I was like just backpacking through South or yeah, so through South America. I mean, a lot of things are like I'm constantly moving, being exposed to different things, like having a conversation here in Spanish, and then like riding a bike and then eating. So like I was undergoing so much change, like yeah. as it was. So yeah, I mean. It's all about the attention. It's about where's my attention and like right now. So right. when I was eating, I was like, damn it, I feel heavy, like yeah. nasty. And then that's the beauty of intention, the attention. Like you can just, I can bring my attention somewhere else and like good for good or bad. You know? right, it, exactly. it really depends on yep. what you're using it for. So but. tell um, people who don't know about your trip, this trip that you're talking about, what did you do? Where did you go? And um, what was, let's start with the why. Like where was the inspiration? Sure. Yeah. So, well, first I traveled to Ecuador and Peru and I was there for roughly a total of two months. Um, so the why, the why is like, my idea of the why is it's, it was like constantly evolving. I didn't really have like a, like a really set reason to go. Like, I mean, I, I've traveled in the past and I really enjoy like completely completely immersing myself in another culture like learning a new language learning a different way of life like getting perspectives from different people because i just like i love it it just takes me out of my comfort zone so that i can learn how another part of the a good portion portion of the world lives because i mean i've grown up in rhode island pretty much my whole life and i can i get in my like small rhode island bubble i mean 
Right. And then I, there's so much more out there. And there's so much more out there. I know. So that was like a huge part of it. Like I really just wanted to go and drop drop everything and go experience and experience. I totally did like so much stuff. It was awesome. Um, and you were primarily backpacking, were you staying in hostels, things like that? Yeah, yeah, I was uh, hostels, pr- definitely primarily hostels in Ecuador for the first two weeks. Um, I was working on a farm, so it was, I was there for two weeks, and it was, it was awesome. It was, I, I was actually, a, farm? it was actually a cacao and coffee farm. Uh, oh my God, <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah, so... And um, there was, there were two main crops for coffee and cacao, but it was a very like young farm. So they were only, it was roughly three years was how long they'd been running. So, and they were experimenting with all these different permaculture techniques and, and they would have like, they had two main plots of land and like one plot was they had, they had planted everything and were experimenting. And then they, we were starting on a new plot where they had like, they tested all these things. Some things worked, some things didn't. And then this new plot was like, okay, we know what we want to do now, so let's do it. And it was it was really cool. So what were they growing? So what were oh, cacao. so cacao and coffee were the were the two main. I don't know if cash crop is really the right term, but that's like what they were going to sell. Yeah. But they, we were planning so many other things. The, the way the way there's so much that goes into farming. Oh yeah. I, I didn't. Prior to this, I had no idea, but it's like you, we planted banana trees, a, well, you get bananas out of them, so we're like, as a, you can eat that as a food source, but also bananas just provide, banana trees provide tons of shade, and coffee loves shade. Then you have these other plants that um, you you plant, like, really, like, in the beginning, and they grow really fast, Then you cut them down, and you leave them on the plot near the coffee and cacao, and they provide nutrients for the plants and then they grow off those nutrients. And it's just this crazy system. Yeah, because these guys aren't hauling in big like tractor trailers of fertilizer and stuff like that. They're using (laughs) the land to fertilize the land, to shade the crops, to grow the food. Exactly. It's really, really cool. And my experience when I was in Guatemala is if if there's like a plot of land, they're going to, they're going to farm it. Like the permaculture was crazy, like on like the sides of mountains. Is, exactly. Insane use of, um, of the land and just really using the land for what it is, for, for what it can provide for their village, for their, you know, livelihood and their families. It's so, so cool. I think we could probably learn a lot, um, from, these, especially South America, just in the way that they farm. Yeah, totally. So did you did you drink some of the coffee? Like, yeah, was that, was it we amazing? took we took it from like we took the beans off the plant. Oh. We deshelled them or took the shell off, grinded it or roasted it, grinded it, brewed it, drank it. So you hand peeling? Yeah, we were. So were you hand peeling the cacao too? We the cacao was at a like was really young stage, so we weren't actually harvesting cacao. We okay. planted a little bit of cacao, but they're probably gonna harvest. I bet they're probably gonna do like the cacao we're drinking right now comes from San Marcos, um, Guatemala, and that's all hand peeled and mm. um, you know never touches a machine. It's just so pure. I mean, you took a you took a whiff of it. It's, it's beautiful stuff. Beautiful. It's the best, <laughs> it's like the best cacao I've ever had. Not, not that I'm some connoisseur, but it was. Yeah, it's delicious. It's pretty amazing, yeah. yeah. So then um, you were at the farm for how long? I was at the farm for two weeks. Cool. And How did you get hooked up with that? Uh, so uh, there's this big organization called Woofing. It's like Worldwide Opportunities for Organic Farming. I think that's what the acronym stands for. And um, basically all, any, all over the world, even in the United States, it's just people that have farms, they, they post Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, and you can go work. You for like for us it was like 40 uh we I we were paid $40 a week to stay, which paid for our food, but usually it's like you go work and they give you a place to stay and, and then food to eat and it's just kind of like a work. Oh, that's a we could program. probably do a little bit of that on our tour. You could totally do that. Yeah, you yeah. it's all their their farms uh, in the United States that do it. So, uh, oh, it's that's definitely so worth cool. checking out. Nice. And who are you with down there? So I was with Anna, Anna Bowers, my girlfriend, mm-hmm. and um, Carly. Actually, no, sorry. In Ecuador, it was just me and Anna, but then we had to come back 
And then we went back to Peru with Carly, which was one of her friends from Colorado. Okay. And yeah. you met Anna through yoga training. Yoga training, yeah. Yoga training love. Yoga training I love, love it. And I met Anna um, just about a year ago when I was out in Texas. And I had, so that was in May, and I had just returned from Guatemala. Mm. And she was all ears about like what I had done. And she was really like, had I, she had the travel bug. Like she yeah. wanted to go somewhere and wanted to, I think at that point she was even talking about Ecuador and Peru and all of that. So um, I'm so glad that she was, and she's still down there, isn't she? She's still down there. Yeah, her and Carly are still there. They're in, they're still in Peru. And they're like making their way to Bolivia and Chile and Argentina. And, oh my God, that's so cool. Yeah. They're, so you went from the farm, then you went to Peru? Or so yeah, we, we spent, um, so we were on the farm for two weeks and then we were hopping around Ecuador for um, like another like two, two or so weeks. And actually it's kind of interesting. So we were in this place called Baños and which is this awesome like hot spring town where you're literally in just like this, there's just mountains all around you. And you're in this little town that's like a little bit, it's in the valley and it's just like, whoa, everywhere you look. It's just so beautiful. mountains and beautiful, like hot springs. and Super lush. So lush. But yeah, it was, it was, it was so nice. But um, I'm sitting, like, it's been, I don't know, we've probably been there for three days and I'm getting like this extreme yearning to go home. It's like, you got to go home. And I'm like, and I'm thinking like, wait, I'm, no, 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 I'm here. Like, like, right. like we plan this, been like, for... I've only been here for, yeah, not too long. And, um, and like sitting with it, observing it, and like just letting my mind do its thing, but it's just not going away. It's like, you need to go home. And I'm like, what? Like, what's going on? And like we we were working at a hostel at the time so we were like volunteering we were at the front desk which is another funny story because it's like all it was all spanish these are like as a hostel for like local ecuadorians (laughs) and And both of us are like you're running the show at the uh, check-in desk yes exactly (laughs) um so that was that was just a mess sometimes but anyways i'm like sitting there we're playing cards and my dad texts me and he's like call me like call me when you can and it was just like as out of the blue text that my dad just would never send me. Like, just the way he was written, I was like... Yeah, and to call him. Yeah, he's like, call me. And I'm like, all right, this is like, what's up? Like, why is my dad telling me this? And I call him, and it turns out that my grandmother had just passed away. Oh, my gosh. So she was, she was 96, like... She was 96? 96, like, awesome, awesome person. Rocking. But she was rocking. But yeah, because she was like, she had been battling this, she had like this little, like, we think it was like cancer. We weren't sure, but this like orb on her neck. Yeah, and she's probably not going to do a thing about and we, it. Yeah, she was in a no. nursing home. Uh, but yeah, he was like, yeah, I, um, we called her O, like literally this letter O. Um, so she was like, yeah, O, O, I'm like, O just passed away. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. Like, You're okay. I'm like, I was like, I, I was like, maybe that, I have no idea if that's why I was feeling such a pull to go home. I mean, I'm probably that was it. But. Oh, of course it was. Yeah, I mean, we think that our connection is is only you and me right now sitting here like in the physical form. Right. But that's so, that's the human condition that makes us believe that. That um, it's, you know, we are, we are everywhere and everything. And so that was just your connection to her, I believe, um, saying you're going to be coming home, you know, or you feeling that you were going to be going there. And, um, you know, there are no mistakes or coincidences. You know, I've done, um, I have a friend out in Colorado. I think she's actually lives in Hawaii now, but she's done like craniosacral sessions with me from Colorado and me laying here on my bed. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really cool <laughs> how you can connect. Like when you really tune in, like that you can connect energetically that we, this vehicle that we're just sitting in right now, this human body is not, this is, I mean, this thing's our limitation, right? This right, is like we right. dropped into this thing so we could get some work done here <laughs> and then get the hell out. Exactly. Um, but, um, but yeah, and I mean, that's, some people would say that's weird or creepy or whatever. I say it's pretty awesome and beautiful. Yeah, I would agree. So then you yeah. came back. That's right. I heard that. Yeah, we, came back. we both came back and it, again... <laughs> something going on like above us mm-hmm. pretty much like 
I want to say it was a week, maybe, or a little bit more than a week after we left, massive earthquake hits Ecuador. Like, Whoa. Massive. And it was in, it was where we were on the farm. It was this one town, like 30 minutes away, got just devastated. Whoa. Like, you slowly. weren't supposed to be there. No. <laughs> all right. Oh. Yeah, right? <laughs> Seriously, so, man. She got you out. She was like, all right, I got to go. I got to go. I got to get, get, get him home. <laughs> wow. That's so. really, really, I don't want to say cool, but that's really um, cool. Like, yeah. That, that, like, you would just, I mean, that's just how life works. Like, we think it's a mistake. We think it's a coincidence. It's not those things. It's, no. it's always exactly as it should be. Right. Yeah. We, we came home for. Wow. I mean. Definitely in a reason. Like that yep, was for sure. It was mm-hmm. crazy. So. And then you went back and went to Peru and, and back. you went to the um like to the ruins. Yeah, I went to Machu Picchu, which yep. was uh spectacular. Like yeah. just this amazing city in the mountains. Like it that's exactly yeah, like I didn't really know much about Machu Picchu except like oh like Machu Wonder Picchu. of the World, Machu Picchu. Right? <laughs> right. Like you know, like I can picture it in my mind, <laughs> but I've never been like, yeah. there. But to like be there and be in that energy and like see, like just feel like the stone and right like is that what it's mean? Is it made it's up? all stone. It's all which and I didn't know this, but basically they were on this mountain and the stone was from that mountain. So they would like I don't even know the right word to say, but they were like harvesting the stone from the mountain that they're on, and then they they use that to like create this massive town and or city, wow. and it's engineered in such a way where it withstands earthquakes it's like like the engineering is just amazing wow like the stonework is like their polishing is just so pristine and i'm just like there's something Whoa. about the like <laughs> those mayans man they are it's crazy yeah they're all knowing uh for sure so now you're back yeah yeah oh, and then another point too which uh i think is important with the with the the trip is that we really didn't have any of it planned out Oh, so yeah. like, like I know how that yeah, feels. I think, yeah, I know how that feels. <laughs> right. So like it started off with this idea like, OK, I want to go to South America. I think I'm going to work on a farm. And that's it. That's yep. all. That's all I have. And I got so much resistance from all these people in my yeah. life. Like, yeah. Wait, what do you mean that you don't have a plan? Like you're going to another country. You don't speak the language that well. You, I mean, like. Right. There's just so much unknown, and then that just leads to fear, and every, and it just like it's just this idea that's like, oh my god, I need to have everything, all my ducks in a row. I need to be able to control this and control that, and blah 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 blah. But um, what I found, which and I'm always just like, like I don't want to plan. Like I'm just gonna go. Yeah. A backbone is good. Like I, yeah. I'll concede that. Like it's like mm, okay, backbone I can see is has some utility, but. It was such an awesome experience because I go down there and no, no way of like ideas like Machu Picchu, like I want to go there. I knew that. But everything else was just like this open, no expectations, no, uh, like I need to see this, this and this. And if I don't, then the trip's ruined. Like none of that. And then I have all these amazing experiences. Like I meet all these people that not in my wildest dreams could I have ever conceived. It's like, right. and it's just like. That's just being here and just not being attached to all these th- different outcomes and just being like, all right, I'm going to go today. I'm going to wake up and we'll go to this cafe and then see what happens. And then see what happens. Exactly. And so a lot of people are asking us now that we're getting closer to our trip, like, so what's your itinerary and blah, blah, blah. And even in, um, we've got some companies that are jumping on board because they want to be a part of it. Um and um, even in, like, we've created a document, like, branding opportunities, you know, and even in, like, that document, we say, like, you know, just something along the lines of just as, you know, the inspiration for this tour came from something higher than us, so will the itinerary. Right. right? So if, like, right. these companies aren't cool with us not really knowing what's going to happen, then, you know, they shouldn't be on board with us. But for the most part, like, they want to be a part of it. And what's happening is that the dots are starting to like light up. Like um, my one of my oldest friends just happens to uh, know somebody um, in Huntington, West Virginia, which happens to be one of the most unhealthiest towns in America. Well, that sounds like a great place for us to go. So she connected us, you know. Mm. And then I've got another friend who happens to know the mayor of this town, like in Alabama. Well, okay, that sounds like a good person to know. So we'll probably go there. 
And um, and it's the way I've been describing it to people, which is interesting to watch the reaction to it. <laughs> is um, I'm just I'm just looking for the next breadcrumb. That's mm. all I. That's all I feel like I have to do. And you and I were talking before we started recording about um, like today, especially. I've been noticing a lot of um, like like fear today, like a lot of fear. And it has nothing to do with where I am now or like the, even these next steps. It's the six months down the line, which is like, I just know, I just nullify that stuff right away, but it's just such a little pest. Like it keeps coming up. And then I, and then I just will my, one of my biggest, most effective tools that I found is like when the fear comes in, like, what are you going to do? How are you going to support yourselves? Where are you guys going to live? Like, are you going to get a job? And I just, I just kind of I nullify it by saying something completely opposite of it. Like, you mm. know, we live in great abundance and we are going to be cared for and everything's going to fall into place, you know? And so that's what I've been doing all day is freaking nullifying all this <laughs> crap that's raining down. But that's because I'm human and this is how we have to work with the human condition. But I do not want to stick to a plan because that person who is who doesn't even know that they're waiting for us and that we don't know that they're waiting for us. Right. Like we might miss them if we've got an itinerary and a plan and places that we need to absolutely be. And so these dots are kind of lighting up on the map in the exact kind of um, way that we, you know, our rough idea of where we're going. But um, but just picking up that next breadcrumb is all we need to do. And And that's another thing I've been um, working with today, like before you came over, I just sat in a meditation, like, Oh God, I've got to just kind of rid myself of this. Like enough is enough. And, um, and just like I was sitting in the meditation and, and I was thinking about our yoga teacher, Philip, and just like right now I'm safe. Like right now I'm fine right, right. now. Like my belly is full and I'm warm and I've got you coming over and I want to be here with you. And that's all that matters. And it's, I describe it in my classes as like a deceleration. Yeah. That we just constantly have to decelerate. And especially um, when people project their own, their fears on you for mm-hmm. doing something mm-hmm. like you were doing so unplanned. Um, and so did you feel that like when you were going, like maybe fear that you weren't going to be safe because you didn't have a plan? Yeah. I mean, totally. And you're touching on a huge point with the projection idea of like, I felt so much, like, so much. Everyone's fear is just, like, I know. And then you're like, down. And, and then that Then you're like, like, dude, I got to freaking deal with all your stuff that you're putting on me now. Like, right. enough. And then also, but then you then there's, like, that little, like, little, like, little nagging voice in, in my head that starts going, like, wait, I don't have a plan. Yes, yeah, I like, don't have a plan. Should I, should I make one? Like, <laughs> I know. Am I, I going to research die? all that? Yeah. Clearly right. not. You were cared for. You were yeah. taken out of the place where there was an earthquake. Right? Exactly. Like, exactly. This is what living in alignment is about. Living in alignment is about having that vast unknown and being okay with it. And right. I love it. Like when I, I'm just, I've always been like a spirit that needs to fly. And um, thank goodness I was born to parents who let me do that. Right. Like just amazing. When I was 19 years old, like I'm not going back to Boston University where I'm on the dean's list. I'm going to go sail a boat down to Florida and where I ended up being a magician's assistant. And um, <laughs> and they let me do it. You know, they would. I know that they would pray for me and they were probably worried to death, but they, they just always let me go. Yeah. And um, so I love that unknown. And I've always been, um, you know, when I was younger, I was a little bit more reckless to say the least. Um, but I've always been you know, protected for the most part. And, um, I love walking into that vast unknown because isn't that what this life truly is about? Like we, if we try to control everything and have these itineraries, you're working with a mind that bases everything on past experience. Yeah. And you're, so you're, you're just demanding that everything be a certain way. And then and is that really the question I like to ask myself when I get in the planning mode is like, if I'm demanding that everything be a certain way, am I really living? Is it, is that really what, do I, do I really want to wake up every day and know exactly what's going to happen to me? And then as soon as I lay my head on the pillow, pillow I fall asleep and do it all over again. Oh, that sounds like such a bore. And yeah. And it's, <laughs> uh, it's awful. It's awful. It's right? awful. And, uh, so, but yeah, this idea of like, uh, the unknown, it was just bring, I, like I, I, this thought came to me where, 
uh, my grand my grandfather passed away like a little over a year ago, and I was like super super close to him. He was this awesome guy, like so so like instrumental in my life. And I remember like he had passed away, and I was like like going through the grief process, and I'm like walking up to my front step, and I'm like about to go in my house, and I like. I don't know. I like had this this awareness of this unknown. It's just like, wait, he's not here anymore, which is a fact. Like he's his body's gone, right? And there's this unknown that for so long I'm like, this idea of losing him was so scary. I didn't want to face it. I was like, oh, I can't. Like this unknown is just yeah, no, atta- I can't. yeah, and just like the attachment yeah. to him. Like I can't let him go. Right. And then I, for whatever reason, I was just like, I took a little step, like mentally like through the unknown and i was like oh my god this is like there's just so much space here it's like is he really gone no i can like i still feel him here and it's just like oh the like taking that step through the unknown taking that step into the fear like going against people's projections of their fear on what you're doing and like really just like taking that one step following the breadcrumb and you're like Yeah. To me, that's living. You talked about not living, right? Like that's living. And that's kind of the point like of this podcast. Like we want to bring people to light who are, I I call it living against the grain of society. You know, like I feel like I'm constantly, if you think about um, like corduroy, right? And like everybody's kind of petting the corduroy (laughs) in the right direction. I always feel like I'm the one that's, you know, bringing it up the leg, you know, and, um, and just going in the wrong direction. And, um, and you'll get naysayers for sure. Um, you'll get people who are just not interested at all. Like there's definitely some people that are just like, oh, that's nice. Right. You know, right. Um, and then you get, the, you know, the. I find that the a lot of the fear comes from the people closest to me. Hmm. Yeah. Because they're, they're fearful for me. I mean, it's, it's their fear, which if it's their fear, then it's my fear because right? we're all connected. But it's, you know, they're wanting to control my safety. So like when I took off last year and went to Guatemala by myself and I don't speak the language, all I know is no milk because I didn't want to have any dairy. I was like, no leche, no leche. Like I said that for like 10 days. And um, thank goodness I married a man that just lets me fly. Like he, there's no question, you know, and everyone's like, is your husband okay with this? I'm like, oh yeah. I mean, I'm just like, you know, come out of a meditation. Like I'm going to Guatemala. Like I've been called by the lake. And and so he lets me go. And um, that doesn't mean that there's moments where like, you know, I came out of the airport and it's, I'm all by myself and there's like all these vans and everybody's trying to mm. get you into their van. Yeah, and I've in- got like a four hour ride to Lake Adeline and, um, and I'm just like, I don't even know, but somehow I ended up in the right van and, um, with this amazing man and, you know, had my little Spanish guidebook and we had a conversation, like we were able to connect. There's always a way to connect and we were able to connect. And then, you know, I, um, got out of the van. They popped me on a boat. I didn't even know I was supposed to take a boat. Like I popped me on a boat. And then I just was like, I said, I just said like San Marcos and, yeah. and then they, you know, got, you know, it's like, they just, they arrived. They're like, okay, go. And, um, and then I didn't even know where I was staying. Like I was realizing how unplanned, unplanned. it was <laughs> get- like, when, when I arrived and all these little hustler boys, these adorable little Guatemalan boys were like trying to take my bag, which I knew I was going to have to pay them all off. Yeah. And, um, but somehow they knew the, my friend that was there and, you know, I was guided to the place. Now I'm not saying like, you know, this is for everyone, right? Like don't, you know, go to somewhere that is, I don't know. I don't even want to say unsafe. I'm just, you know, I follow my intuition and I just knew that this was, I was going to be like, this was the plan. The, right. the plan, not my plan, but the plan, and that it all felt right to me every step of the way. Like, okay, I'm getting on a boat now. Like, it all felt right, and um, and I, but I love to kind of live on that edge of fear and uncomfortableness mm. because that's just the spirit that dropped into this body. Like, that's what I love, and so that's what we're about to do. And um, and I think um, we had already planned our trip. We, I mean, we had known we were going to go on this trip when you were telling me about your trip. And I was just like so inspired (laughs) to like really put it into action because, um, just knowing that you're going to go off and just kind of be in a, you know, living from a backpack from a couple months. That's, that's delicious to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's so delicious. So, um, 
All right, so now you're back. And do you have, are you experiencing more unknown? Oh, God. <laughs> What's going on now? <laughs> well, well, so I came back uh, a little bit earlier than I anticipated. And the reason being was uh, I'm going to med school in August. I'm starting med school. And well, there's like a million med schools, like this massive, huge endeavor where, I mean. Very, like, very like human experience yeah right? like exactly you've got deadlines and things to Dead- do and right. you got a plan you got a plan <laughs> you have like it's four years of school and uh three to infinity for residency like depending on what you want to do so like there's just so much planning and so much all this stuff and i'm and my big thing with medicine and wellness and who i am as a or who i've discovered myself to be as a as a person here is that like i always seeking a way to combine the spiritual with the physical like this balance of like t- like for to say something tangible like my yoga practice with my desire to go to med school like i'm all, and like i just didn't like I, there's so much doubt like how can i connect the two how how can i go into an environment that is modern medicine in this country where it's you know the mo is uh pharmaceuticals and surgery and how can i go into an environment like that and an environment that's like extremely toxic because I've, I've worked in the hospital before and like it the dynamics just between people are toxic so yeah. we have there's that aspect you have an aspect where it's pharmaceuticals as i said and surgery which is the main it's not the only thing but it's the main like norm and then here's here i am where i'm like there's definitely like power modern medicine has power it's like not all it's good like it, it it really does help people but there's like this whole other aspect to it of like lifestyle medicine like self-care where you have your meditation and yoga your mind body practices you have your plant-based eating which in the medical world is it's gaining traction it's like people are starting to accept but still the majority of i, mean, I would say the majority of doctors i mean nutrition isn't taught in med school for right. the most part, and at least my understanding of of hearing, no, you know, it's, it's not, not it's not taught. So, and, and then you and what is taught? Um, it's like it's like hours. It's like maybe right. like four to seven hours. And and what is taught is like um, the the foods related to the pharmaceuticals. Right. Like you can't eat this if you're not taking this. this. Drug or... Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. So go ahead. So, so right, you have. So essentially all the things that I like, that I practice now, bringing them into modern medicine is like, I, there's all going to be like a ton of resistance, which is just like this, like, oh my God. And, and anyway, so I came back because I was like, I just need to be home. I need to just like sit down and go to some yoga classes, like be able to like do a meditation in my room and just like really just like make my decision like really just like there's so much going on when you travel like ex- this ex- like everywhere you go is a new experience like you can they never it's like impossible to be bored like you just right. there's so much going on and and in that environment i was just like i can't i can't like there was just i had some doubt i had i wasn't 100 percent for like oh like this is definitely my life it like, sounded like you needed to get quiet i needed to get quiet thank you yes. so when you look at um so sitting here and hearing you talk about like the way Western medicine is now um, in, and I d- do believe that, um, you know, acute pain, um, trauma, I mean, Western medicine, amazing, right. like, just life saving, but for chronic illness, um, chronic pain and working with people for so long that I did in chronic pain and with massage, um, horrible, basically just doesn't, the medication is designed to keep you sick. That's why you stay on it because there's a bottom line there. I mean, it's, I'm not uh, pessimistic. It's these companies need to make money. And so, you know, it keeps you just sick enough. Uh, it doesn't heal you a lot of times. High blood pressure medication doesn't heal you. Mm Um, Um, but when, so when I see like what you want to bring in 
to it, like what, and, and like the resistance that you may get, even though there is a population of doctors that are moving in this direction, which is awesome. Like to me, like that's pretty delicious too. Like that, like there's, (laughs) and it's not easy. It's like, it's the, you know, it's the goat path that we talk about in yoga. It's like, you're clearing the way and all of that. But isn't there something about that that is just so like, yes, that's a, <laughs> ah, I want to be that powerful in this life to be like a paradigm changer. Yeah, it, it's definitely. A, but then do you feel like the load of like, oh my God, do I really have to get myself into something like this again? That's definitely there. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> definitely. I mean, it's the whole package. It's like everything, but. So at 44 years old, I mean, I know anything is possible. Like I could go to med school and yeah. I, could, I could take on this this thing too. I know I could. But when I look at you at 24 years old and like what, like, oh my God, the game changer that you could be. And I've probably said this to you before, like just like BJ and I are some of your biggest cheerleaders, I think, for going in this direction. Of course, you have to do what's right for you. But um you know, to be to have the opportunity at, at such a young age to be such a major game changer in the in the midst of a health crisis seems pretty pretty awesome and and awesome as in huge like huge to take on. It's unbelievable, you know, um, the opportunity that you could have. And one thing that um, you touched upon, which is something that BJ and I talk about, like in our um, in our plant based workshops, is when back in the day, like when, um, you know, the doctors were smoking, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, it was like 7,000 studies in like 25 years or something like that. Um, until doctors said like, Oh, smoking is not good for your health. And they stopped smoking. Right. But back then when everybody was smoking, most doctors were smoking. And right now most doctors are eating, you know, uh, like, omnivores like they're eating you know the standard american diet a lot of them there's fast food restaurants in hospitals and things like that and um so we always say like you know you can wait like you can wait and wait for the doctors to finally catch on and see you know and move to a plant-based diet or you can start doing it now you know but don't forget about what happened with with smoking and the tobacco industry you know, it took thousands and thousands of studies and years and years and years for doctors to finally say, oh my God, this is not good for you. It's, uh, it's like, um, yeah, start now or start later. But the more people that, like you, who have this inspiration to take on something so huge, you know, like, go for it. If it's right for yeah, you. Yeah, no, no, I, I appreciate I can be a it bit of sure. a, I can be a bit of a pusher. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, so how are you feeling about it? Are you, how are you feeling about it now? Are you feeling like you're going to jump ship? Or you feel like you're going to go all in? That's it for now. You're going to have to check in next week for part two of my conversation with Alex and find out what his plans are. Plus, we dive in deeper on the subject of meditation for athletes and how getting still is the key to getting answers and learning about ourselves. This guy is a gift to the world, as we all are, and it's just about unearthing our gifts so that we may share them and contribute to the world we dream of. That's it for this week. Don't forget to get to iTunes and let us know what you think about the show. Has it had an impact on your life, the way you eat, a decision you had to make, or your experience in sport? We're all ears, and we want to hear from you. Thanks for tuning in. Ride the high vibe.